Hello, everybody. Justin Stivers. Thank you guys for, for tuning in or listening, watching for another episode of The Stivers Show. I'm very excited about my, my guest today. You, you've probably seen her, heard her, know her name. She, she's everywhere, which is awesome. Uh, Amanda Suriel, also known as uh, AKA Amanda Demanda. Amanda, what's going on? That's it. Amanda Demanda. It sounds better in Spanish. Amanda Demanda. Amanda Demanda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah. I know we've, we've known each other for, for a little while now, worked a couple cases together. And so I'm excited to, you know, that, that you uh, took some time out of your, your busy schedule to, uh, to be with me today. <laughs> Well, no, thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. And I love talking uh, to the public and other attorneys about different areas of law, because like you mentioned, we have worked on cases together. There are the unfortunate times where I handle wrongful death cases and very much those families need to set up an estate in a probate, which goes hand in hand with what you do. Yeah. So uh, very much all different areas of law cross at some point. So I know uh, to the public, they think that attorneys are just aggressive and adversary, you know, but amongst our peers, we actually get along pretty well. So. Sometimes it depends. I don't get along with everybody. Sometimes, <laughs> most, of, most of the time. Yeah. 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 Well, I would like to start, I know, you know, obviously injury attorney, but I'll kind of let you, you know, maybe open it up. Who are you and, and what do you do? Well, I am Amanda Demanda Law Group, and I've been on my own now for a year and a half, and a good eight months of that has been Corona time, so it's been quite exciting and challenging, but it's very telling to what my passion is, which is helping the community and, you know, fighting a good fight, and that comes in every regard. I mean, I started, uh, when I graduated law school, I started actually working on the defense side. That means I was defending the big box stores, the big department stores, your local supermarkets, uh, when people had injuries injuries there. And I know everything those companies do to save money because at the end of the day, they're running a business, but they are negligent sometimes and uh, they, they do need to pay up, but they will do everything to try to minimize what they have to pay or win on a technicality. And that didn't sit well with me because I am part of this community and I did see people who were wronged and hurt and uh, it, it just didn't sit right. So eventually I did cross over and now I do represent the people against the corporations uh, when they're injured or hurt or wronged by a corporation. And that can, that, that runs the gamut from being a car accident where your insurance doesn't want to pay you what you you're owed in your medical bills to slipping and falling at a grocery store that knew it had a problem and did nothing about it to a product that is dangerous. Uh, I have some cases where product liability cases where there's pills and medications that the companies know that are harming people and they still give them out to the public. So all those type of cases are things I handle. Any type of injury someone sustains from the negligence of someone else or a corporation or company is the kind of cases I handle. And I do it mostly because I like the feeling of helping someone when they feel that they've been wronged and to try to make them whole again as much as possible. So that really is my background. Since I was young in my community, I was born and raised in Miami. I was class president, always doing above and beyond community service hours. I actually got a scholarship uh, for having the most community service hours from my high school graduating class, uh, which was like 3,000 kids. So uh, I, I do, that's something that I, I really enjoy, reaching out to my community and doing community events. And I think people who know me know that about me. I give back in scholarships to underprivileged kids that are going to college. And that's where I spend a lot of my money and time. So um, I think it goes hand in hand with what I do. And that's why I get up every morning and do this, even during these very trying times, because there are people that need our help. And, you know, I think you're, you're kind of probably on the same boat in that regard, but that's a little bit about me. Oh my God. Are you, is that, is that a pre-political campaign? Are we? <laughs> that's my monologue. And yeah. You're, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's, yeah. And that's a good, that's a good platform. That's a, you know, from the community giving back. I think that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm your neighborhood attorney, you there know. You go. No, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, you know, how, why did you, why did you get into it? Which you kind of, you kind of, um, you kind of said, you know, it, you, you like that feeling of, of giving back and, and helping, you know, other people. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a heavy, it's a heavy topic, right? To, to yeah. deal with people day in and day out being injured. So I guess that's, you know, that's kind of why you got into it, though. Yeah, I mean, it's it, unfortunately this area of law gets very cheapened by a lot of marketing or a lot of uh, clinics and people who want to kind of abuse the insurance system, you know, and we know in Miami and in South Florida, fraud is king. And it's That's unfortunate true. because it does 
it, it's cyclical. It circles all the way back. I'm even, I even started to sign up some cases of hospitals that have declared certain deaths, COVID-19 death when they weren't and the family members can't cremate or can't bury their family because they're being held back for research autopsies, which is unfair because wow. we know for a fact in the medical records, they didn't have COVID. Uh, and that's, you know, it's, it's, I don't like to say that's a, a problem in Miami. I just say it's a Miami problem uh, because uh, that's just kind of my way that Miami's my hometown. I believe that, you know, we are a great community uh, besides all the things everyone sees and says, but this area of law does, does get a lot of, it gets cheapened by a lot of the commercials and the, a lot of the attorneys or clinics that are, they're claiming to help people and they don't. And then those people come to me sometimes and they're jaded and it's understandable. Um, also, would you see sometimes in premises liability cases or things of that nature, someone falls or gets hurt or they're embarrassed because they don't want to sue the, the place they go everywhere every day to shop or they, they feel bad, but they have been wronged. So it, it's difficult to manage people's emotions when they're in these kind of situations. Um, but it, it's, it's tough, but it's very rewarding um, for the person I'm helping and for myself because to me, you know, money comes and goes and I've helped people where... I've actually done cases and they're worth a lot of money and I've not taken anything because even though there could be a good chunk of money to me, to the person that was left in a certain condition, that money means nothing because their day-to-day -day life is so expensive now based on all the help they need that I much rather them try to have a better life than, than me try to line my pocket. That's just who I am. So how does, cause like, you, you know, what you're kind of saying, there's, there's a lot of, Attorneys who do what you do, right? There's a lot of, a lot yeah, of. Or say they do. <laughs> right. Yeah. So how how does the how does the average consumer know this is good? This one's good. This one's not good. You know, they do a better job, or they specialize in this type of. You know, how how does the average consumer know that? Well, that's that's a tough question, and and you know, it's kind of like the dog that barks the loudest gets the case, and that's why I've taken on the initiative to try to do grassroots and community outreach and just inform the public and my means and however I can uh, so that, you know, the community knows. You can call an attorney, speak to them. You don't have to feel obligated to go with a place that's saying they're going to get you the most money or the first person that calls your cell phone because that's actually illegal. Um, you should question people who try to do that to solicit you directly. You should do your own research. But that's why I think we're lucky, Justin, that we have these platforms like this show uh, and all the other social media platforms and people have the computer and their smartphones right in their hand. Do your own research, check who has reviews, make a call yourself, the consultation's free in my office. So it really is up to, to the consumer to do their research. Uh, and it's unfortunate that that's put on them in a moment of tragedy. So that's why I try by all means to get on as many platforms as they can to do community outreach and just educate the public before they're in that position. Because once they're in that position, now they're not only a victim of an injustice or an injury, but they're also a victim of a solicitation by a lot of the fraud that we see here in Miami. Yeah, hundred percent agree. I mean, I, I, um, you know, putting content out there and, and meaningful content, right? Like actual useful information. Well, informative, right. So people can, you know, look you up. I think I was like telling you earlier, I had a call and this person, you know, she, she lives in another state, you know, father passed away. She doesn't know anybody down here and she's just calling attorneys and she's like, I don't, you know, I'm just speaking to someone on the other side of the phone. I'm like, I get that. Go yeah. Google me, go look up all this stuff. You'll see that like we're legit, legitimate people. And I think, yeah, you know, <laughs> That's, that's like the best way, you know, if you're going to at least like do your homework, don't just, just because you saw something or, or read something, you know, make sure that they're actually, you know, legitimate. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And, and it's tough. It really is tough, but that's why I always tell I, my office, for example, and I have a radio show in, in Spanish for like an elderly community. And I try to inform people of what insurance policies you should have for, for auto policies. For example, in Florida, we have by law, a very limited requirement so if you don't insure yourself and you get in an accident and the person who who hit you only has full coverage and they say full cover in miami <laughs> and that means ten thousand dollars for yourself for a clinic for a doctor for a hospital that means nothing to the person you injured so you need to get uninsured motors you need to insure yourself and i tell all the people who listen to me in the community if you ever have a question 
you have no accident, you have no case, but you have a question, if you have the right auto policy, you can call my office and we'll walk you through it. We'll review your policy for you and we'll help you understand that for free. And that's something, a service that we're doing just informative before anything ever happens. Because we understand that once you're in the situation, it might be too late. Yeah. So we are that office. We are those attorneys. And we, we just try to do more of a community service than, you know, just being there for you when you need the attorney and you're in the tragedy. So that's how we try to help consumers make better decisions. What, what do you see as maybe like some of the most common mistakes that, that, clients going through an injury make before they they get to you oh they speak to the insurance directly or they sign something for the insurance or they give a recorded statement or um or yeah or they they well i'm not going to say they sign with a wrong attorney because they don't know that until that relationship falls out but a lot of the times i think that one thing people should be very cautious of if you fall in the store if you get hurt in a hotel, if you're driving, you're in an accident, insurance companies are going to call you right away because they want to minimize the risk. They want to minimize what they're going to have to pay out. And they're going to be trying to solicit a recorded uh, statement from you wherein you might say, I don't remember what I fell on, or I think I took pictures and you send them over and, and they're going to try to make everything seem like it's, like it's a defense for them. So that's one of the biggest mistakes that's very hard to reverse. So never speak to an insurance company without your representation of an attorney. And I mean, the representation from the attorney is free to you. You won't have to pay it out of pocket. The goal is that out of the settlement money or that insurance company will be paying your attorney. So there really is a, you know, no, no reason why to face an, uh, an insurance company on your own. Yeah. How has, uh, how, you know, shifting a little bit, how has COVID affected all of this? Maybe in terms of, you know, your business, because obviously, you know, maybe less people out and about, right? I'm not sure. Uh, and just, you know, general, general public, are you seeing different, different types of cases? Or, or what do you, what do you kind of sense? We have seen, what, what's interesting is that I, I think that car accidents are still going to happen. Uh, there's not as much we have, volume. We have terrible drivers here, so that will always happen. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I think that that's, that's always going to happen. But uh, you, we're not seeing maybe the same volume, but we are seeing more catastrophic type uh, accidents because there are more deliveries with like the Amazon trucks and, and all these, you know, trucks, like small box trucks and things trying to get out and make quick deliveries to people's houses. We have been seeing an increase in my office, at least of like Uber Eats drivers or, you know, um, Postmates and their little scooters. And we represent uh, those drivers because they're trying, to, they're out there in the rain, in the traffic, trying to get you food. And then people are just running them off the road, which is. I, need, I need those people. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. We all depend on that. That's the community we really depend yeah. on. Actually, the whole effort for them. I got them raincoats and we did a whole thing to protect their Uber drivers because Uber Eats drivers, because during this time, we're trying not to go out because of COVID. And then there's rain season. So, People just want to stay home. Well, these guys are doing the, the dirty work for us, so we got to uh, give them some perks. But we've seen that, and, and we've seen a lot of increase in premises liability cases in instances where now restaurants are setting up outside in a parking lot, which is make, a makeshift restaurant. It hasn't passed permits. It's uneven flooring. The boots from inside are being moved outside without being pinned to the floor. They're falling back. Chairs are falling apart, and we've seen really bad injuries in these situations. Uh, just in these big box stores and, and the wholesale stores, they make you wait outside in a line and they've created the lines with pallets. Like if it's a Disney world, but it's not, and it's all makeshift and people are getting really hurt. So we've signed up a lot of those cases um, because, and that's, that's all because of these times really. Uh, interesting. How, you're kind of shifting a little bit then also, how, how are you, you know, I, I know you do, you've got the radio show, you're doing community outreach. I guess I, you know, kind of a couple of questions. How do you, how are you getting your name out there? And again, in a very crowded space, um, you know, attorneys in general, no shortage of them, but definitely in the injury space, a lot of, a lot of other, you know, attorneys out there, I guess, how, you know, how are you really finding your, your voice out there? And then how have you learned to do that? Cause I know you said, you know, the, the firm is relatively new, you know, just under just shy of two years, but you've already got, you know, a great team, you know, you're growing, you've done a lot of different stuff. It seems like, you know, rapid growth. So a lot of people watching, or maybe like, crap, I want my business to grow like that. So how, yeah. how, what's the secret? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, 
Well, just a, a little lapse. I, I have been doing plaintiff's work for six years. I managed someone else's firm for a little while, and then I realized I needed to fly and go on my own um, because I have a whole different mentality of how I attack business and do things. And, and that is, I'm everything. You know, I, when you call my office and you want to talk to the attorney because you want to know something specific, I'll answer the phone. I'll make time. I make time for everything. If I say that I'm going to do something and it gets on my agenda, I will not go to sleep till that's done. That's just who I've always been. Uh, people ask me, how do I do it? I don't know. Day by day, hour by hour. I just don't stop because I believe in myself. And I, and I mean, it, these, you, you can read this cliche like memes all day, but unless you really execute them and envision yourself in those positions and doing it, um, nothing's going to happen. You know, I could sit there and go to a motivational speaker and walk away and feel great. And if I just go home, sit on my couch, nothing's going to happen. So, um, I just feel that when you hear people say, use the social platforms to your advantage, don't just get on them and then get like sucked into like looking at the feed, go on them, DM somebody back who, who wrote to you, engage in a conversation, help somebody go on hashtags and look up car accidents or depressed or reach out to someone and say, look, I don't know you, but you're, you're concerned, whatever, what's going on in the community, reach out. Just down the street from my office, there was a little restaurant that I've gone since I was a kid and I heard it was closing down. Um, and I, I guess it's because of Corona and, and being closed down for a little bit and not being able to make the same income. And I got concerned. So I reached out to everybody on, on my Instagram, social media accounts, and we all rallied over there, made a long line, started buying. They ran out of food that day because we, we all went out there. And I actually got some local newscasters to come out and, and we did a little story. And we just find out that, yes, it is financial hardship during these times, but also the owners, you know, declined in health. And, and it was just nice to be part of that moment in the community where you're seeing a transition. You're seeing a, a move and, and being part of it and knowing that we could have done something we wanted to was nice. And, and to see that there is that community outreach and believing in your community is very important because to me, community is everything. When you feel down, when you feel like you can't do it anymore, reach out to people. They're, they're there for you. Uh, a lot of people are just very prideful and don't want to. But I always say, I, I'll tell you when I'm having struggles and I'll, I'm very honest about it. And I think that that gets people a long way. You know, just honesty and hard work. It, it really isn't much of a science to it. It's just a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, well, and do it with a smile, you know. You just yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're de definitely, definitely a hustler. Definitely, definitely out there. What, you, you, where do you think you get that that drive for community? Oh, geez. Um, Tough one. You know, it, this is going to sound very. You could take it how you want, but I, I just have this affinity to help people. I, I feel my my biggest reward is when I'm able to give monetarily. Uh, educational wise or help somebody out i just feel a sense of i don't know it's just, it's satisfying to me to know i did something or i left a mark on someone because i just feel that on this earth unfortunately we're just like a passing moment you know and unless you touch somebody else's life you might not you know be remembered or have done anything so i just live by that and everything i do revolves around my end goal of doing that which is I want to have a successful business so then I can have money so then I can have some power in my community so I can help the community. And not many people do that. You know, many people are focused on doing it for themselves. And I think that that's how you can get lost easily in business. So I just always throw it back into the community somehow. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's, I think that's a great place to, to end right there too. That, that's awesome. Um, I mean, I, you're, you're doing a lot of great stuff. I know you're all over, all over the place, you know, <laughs> yeah you're on tv now i think you got you got a tv show with with telemundo or yeah we i do have some different spots because I, I it's it's more community-based stuff and we do segments of like you know ask uh responde or anybody ask us something we do a response segment of how to help the community here and then consumer fraud and things like that not only in the area of law i do but just in general um and that's my way to reach out and help the community i'll do it so how, how else can people, you know, if they, if they want to contact you, get in touch, if they need you, you know, for, for your services, what's the best way for them to kind of find you? Well, if you Google me, 
Amanda Demanda, you will find me. <laughs> I'm the only one. Amanda Demanda, it's trademarked. If anybody else is using it, you let me know because they shouldn't be, right? I'm an attorney at the end of the day. Um, Amanda Demanda, I'm on every social media platform. I have a website and they can always call my office at 305-505-1000. Um, and that's where you can find me or they can call you and you can give them the information and they can call me. There we go. Either, either or, either or. Yeah. You'll find hey. me. If you want to find me, you'll find me. Awesome. Awesome. Amanda, I appreciate it. Thank you for, for being on. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Justin. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye.